All right. Well, good evening. If you're watching at home with us, we're welcoming you. We'll just want to welcome you into Harrison Baptist Church for our time of Bible study. Tonight's going to be uh, more of a discussion uh, than a straightforward Bible study as we look back over this past sermon series in the book of Lamentations that was called Hope and Hurting. We're going to start off with a word of prayer and uh, get going in that direction. Father God, we thank you, Lord, today that you have brought us here together, whether you brought us here in person or whether you brought us here uh, through, uh, through the technology, Father. Either way, we thank you that you allow us to meet together, to be with one another, to relate to one another as we relate to you. So, Father God, would you help us, Lord, to, uh, to take advantage of all of that, Lord, according to your will, and that we would thank you uh, and serve you in the blessing of it. Father God, would you help us tonight, Lord, to, uh, to process a little bit more of, uh, of what we've heard these last five Sunday mornings, uh, what we talked about a good bit on Wednesday nights, uh, about uh, the destruction that came with the discipline that you brought upon your people, but also the hope that came in the midst of all of that. Father, teach us as you will. And Lord God, let your word be our guide. And Father, let your spirit be our instructor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, we have got uh, five chapters that we're not going to re-preach to you tonight. Um, I just got to tell you, as a preacher... Um, Lamentations have been a difficult book to preach um, because of, like we said this morning, the, the, you know, the darkness of it all. Um, it doesn't, it's not devoid of hope by any stretch of the imagination, and certainly because of the rest of Scripture and how it dovetails into the rest of Scripture, um, there's hope throughout. But boy, when you're just really studying those words and, study, and trying to put yourself in the mindset of, of the people who were living in that suffering, it's just a dark dark times. So uh, there's definitely easier passages, easier books of the Bible to preach. Uh, I'm thankful that God led us through that, though, because honestly, it stretched me in some ways and challenged me in some ways that I needed to be stretched and challenged in. Um, and, I, and I heard a lot of you say that you were thankful that we, you know, here lately, it seems like between Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, we, we've hit some books. We've been able to either through Bible study or sermon series, go through some books that you weren't as familiar with as some of the others, Right. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with preaching the story of Noah, but we've all pretty much heard that one, right? There's still more we can glean from it, but, but some of these were a lot less familiar uh, situations, a lot less familiar stories. But at any rate, it, it, was, it was a difficult um, book to preach, and I'm still learning about it even now that the sermon series is over with. Uh, but we want to look back. There was a theme there in the last point of each message. Um, the way God, you know, had us put this together in each sermon was to, to, to look at starting with us uh, and, and how we feel and how we suffer and then ending on the note of what he does. Um, uh, because I think that, that when we're going through the greatest times of our lives, but certainly when we're going through the toughest times of our lives, we don't just need to focus on what we're doing or what we could do or what we think we even should do. We need to look at what God can do that only God can do. Because that changes the way we go through those struggles. That changes the way we experience those, uh, those moments and, and seasons of suffering. And so uh, it's important, I think, for us to do that. We have to, uh, to, we have to look beyond ourselves. You know, whether it be, um, you know, working through addictive behaviors or whether it be, um, you know, self-help and things like that. A lot of these things, even though they start with a very inward-focused, you know, search for help, a lot of them talk about appealing to a higher power. Well, that's for a reason. That's because we can't get it all done on our own, and we know we're never meant to. Um, now, some people find their higher power somewhere other than the God of Scripture, and that's a different you know, topic for a different time. But if we are believers in Christ, we know that there is more going on than, than what we're doing. There is more, uh, there is more opportunity than we could take up on uh, there's more uh, things to be done than we have the power to do. And so, so here God is, every moment, of every part of our lives, um, available to us. He makes himself available to us for us to submit to and join into his will for our lives and the situations that make up our lives. But we have to look to him. We can't sit back, as we're tempted to do so often in our lives, and say, okay, I'm hurting in this area of my life. So, I, you know, some of us are just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to throw my hands up and hope it works out. Some of us, though, are kind of driven. We're, we're type A types, you know, that they say, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this next, and then I'm going to work through, and I've got a process, and we're going to get out of this. Well, that's not at all what God calls believers to do. Now, it doesn't mean that he doesn't call us to take some steps, but he doesn't call us to take our steps. 
He calls us to take the steps that he gives us, that are his steps that are for us. Uh, and so we have to look to what he can do. And then like we talked about this morning, God is not allowing us to suffer just so we can stay the same throughout our lives. He's allowing suffering to come to build in us perseverance and character um, and, 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 to, and, and strength and faith. He's allowing that to happen. And if we just try to get back to where we were, we, we circumvent the whole point of the suffering that we were allowed to go through. Um, again, it's not that we look forward necessary to suffering or that we, that we you know, start to seek out suffering for the sake of suffering. That's not the point at all. But we embrace it when it comes because we know that God has promised us that if we'll follow him in and through our suffering, he will grow us through it and out, and he'll bring us out better, uh, you know, better for it on the other side. But we can't do that for ourselves, not in the way that he can. Now, sure, we might go through something, you know, go about our own way of fixing it, and maybe it seems to fix it. But boy, even if, it, even if it's successful, it's not nearly as successful as what God would do and would desire to do in that. So as we look at it, we're just going to really look at the, at the five points uh, that wrapped up each of the five sermons tonight in our recap. So, uh, you know, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five of Lamentations, largely similar in what they say. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to belittle the scripture there and, and not act like it was important to have five chapters, uh, all poetically written, all, um, you know, acrostics to, to where they use the, uh, in, in the Hebrew language, it would start with the first letter, you know, each stanza would start with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet in order. Uh, and that's why uh, we have 22 verses in chapters 1, 2, 4, and 5. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we have 20, excuse me, we have 66 verses in chapter 3 that is the longest one in the middle there. Um, but five laments that, that tell us um, just of the suffering that was going on in the city of Jerusalem and the people that lived in and around Jerusalem being the last holdout uh, or the last holdouts of of the nation of Israel at this point, or really the, the nation of Judah, if we're speaking specifically. But of God's people in the promised land in that era, they were the last ones. They were the last ones left. The northern kingdom of Israel, which may, was, you know, was, was comprised of 11 of the 12 tribes, they, they, they had already been taken off. They had already been beaten. They had already been defeated. They had already been brought to exile. And then Jerusalem was the last place to fall, and Judah, the country in which it, uh, Jerusalem sat. Uh, so we, we've seen all that largely similar sentiment of, oh, Lord, why us? Um, and then every once in a while, some, some reality, uh, some, some, you know, some recognition of, well, this is because of the sin of our people. This is because of our ancestors' sin or because of our sin or because of both. Uh, because of repeated um, disregard for God's warning, for God's uh, command, for God's um, you know, promise of, of good, but also promise of, of, of discipline if they didn't do it. And so they get to that point and they're just, they're just struggling so much. But when we turn around and we look at what God does in it, we saw five truths from the book of Lamentations. First off, uh, we saw that the Lord is still working. Now, we're going to let you talk about this here in just a second. But just to, to, to introduce this point, or to reintroduce this point, I guess, it's from five weeks ago, uh, five Sundays mornings ago, uh, the Lord is still working. There has never been a time, there will never will be a time, that God is not working. There's, you know, we, we have times where we, um, you know, we work really hard and then we take it easy sometimes. Uh, we have vacations, we have rest, we have Sabbath, we have a lot of things. God doesn't require those things. Uh, he doesn't need to take those things. He doesn't tire like we do. He doesn't get worn out like we do. And in fact, his patience is so much greater than ours that he's always working. Uh, you say, oh, well, he rested on the seventh day. Well, you know why he did that? That was part of his work to teach us how to rest because he knew we needed it, right? And it was a way to honor him. It wasn't because, oh, man, six days of creation will just tire an almighty God out. No, that wasn't it at all, right? The Lord is still working. So when we put this in the perspective of our suffering, even in our time of hurt, even in our time of struggle, God is still working. And he's not just working somewhere else. God's working in our lives. If you take in a breath and it comes through your lungs and it comes back out from your lungs, back out through your mouth or your nose, um, that means God's still working in your life. He's working. Well, what type of work is he doing? 
Um, He's bringing about comfort. He's bringing about redemption. If you're a believer in Christ, He's bringing about growth in your faith, growth in your witness, growth in your boldness to share what He's doing in your life, growth in your knowledge and, and your recognition to be able to appreciate that He's still working even more and more day by day. Because I can tell you, uh, you know, this is, uh, and this is nothing compared to some of how long you guys have been Christians in the room, uh, but, but let's say I'm 47, this is year 35 going into year 36 um, where, you know, of, of my time being saved. And, and there's times where I just sit back and go, wow, I didn't see God working that way. I didn't think that was what he was doing, but that's exactly what he was doing in that time that, that I may have you know, not paid attention to how he was working. He was still working. As long as we have breath, God is still working in and on and wants to work through our lives. He's not a God who decides, okay, we're done with this person for a little while. Let's go work on somebody else. Now, sometimes we may wish <laughs> or even pray, God, I've had enough. Go work on my neighbor for a little while, right? You go take care of them. I'm good for just now, you know, but that's not how that works at all. He is still working. So let me ask you this question thinking about that. How is God working in your life? What's God doing? What is God showing you? What's he teaching you? What's he reminding you of? How is God working in your life? Not a rhetorical question. I actually want answers here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Extending your, uh, your, your horizons on what you can deal with in Him. Yeah, okay, good. When you got to your last win, it went in. Up and there's another be, be careful that uh, Lord, I can't take this anymore. I, I've had all I can stand. Well, that may not be the truth. That's right. That's right. So he's broadening that. Yeah, that's good. What else? In the last couple of, go ahead, in the last couple of years, you know, he's brought me through a lot of illness to the other side, and I, I wasn't real sure, you know, especially the first one. Sure. I was even going to get there. Sure. He brought you your physical body and, and the physical tolerances that you have. Exactly. And then last year, you know, not as desperate, but could have been still a bad thing. He's brought me through both of that. And then also the emotional and the, the psychological things that go along with that, as well as the spiritual things, too. So, yeah, he's constantly bringing us through. Excellent. What else, Vicki? Um, I deal with depression and loneliness around a lot of people and God is showing me that he's all I need you know that mm. I shouldn't feel lonely because mm. he's always with me and even when you do he, he's there to to meet that loneliness to meet that need yeah yeah so he is uh he, he's working in you to to real to realize that he's present right. absolutely all right we got some representation from this side of the room other two sections how we doing what's God doing how's he working in your life Yeah. Yeah, that, that whole thing of we check the box off and say that we did this the godly thing and now it's time to go to you know, to work or go to life, you know, it's not that's that, that dichotomy is not the way you set it up, right? Yeah, absolutely. And he gives you sufficient power uh from him throughout the day for as long as we'll 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 recognize it and live in it. Good. What else? What's that? Sometimes God's work in our lives is to show us just how much we have to be grateful for and that there's more and more by the day. That's right. That's right. To be obedient to him. Good. That's awesome. All right. Anywhere in the room? Anybody else? I just think that the relationship and 
flow and understanding of the scripture, learning or living that I have now makes me regret why didn't I listen mm. to him at an earlier age mm. that the happiness I thought I was going through is nothing to what it really is that he has to be. What may I have done that right. I didn't listen to him. I didn't follow the right path. It is. Now I can be thankful that he's open minded a lot more than I ever saw before. He's working in shifting perspectives in your life. It's isn't just it? a shame that you're in the stage of ending your earthly life that you realize it. Why didn't you realize it 50 years ago? That that whole thing about youth being wasted on the young, yeah. right? Yeah, that's uh, that's that's that's, that's sometimes true, and we like it to be, isn't it? And it's like you said through meditation, even though they turned so much away and. Had he forgotten, they were questioning, had he forgotten, the answer was no, he had no, no, still working, still still, still work to do, um, and, and still work to be acknowledged that needs to be done. That's good. Perspective is a good thing that we gain. Sometimes it shifts day by day, doesn't it? Not always the way we'd like it to, <laughs> uh, especially when we realize, oh, I could be... I could have been doing this with just what I've got. I, you know, all the time I'm thinking I didn't have enough or didn't know enough. I could have been doing the whole thing uh, just like he told me to. Anybody else? How's God working in you? Preacher, I'm grateful that he got me through my cancer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Working in our physical body like, like we talked about with Sandy. Yeah, that's a, and sometimes that's the, you know, some of the things that he allows to get our attention, you know, and, and sometimes we have a hard time seeing how he's working or, or you know, perceiving how he's working unless it's something tangible in our lives. And, and sometimes physical illness is one of those things. You know, I think that's largely part of why that, you know, he allows us to go through those things is so he can carry us through to get our attention and to let us turn. And he does the work of us turning to him to recognize and to, and to appreciate him for it. You know, I'd never smoke another day in my life. Sure, sure. Sure, that's right. That's right. That's not something you probably would have thought before all of that, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I think the rest. Something ain't gonna hurt me. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's for other people, right? Yeah. 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 Sure. I understand that. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. I don't really know quite how to say this, but I'll start off with what you said to him. He asked, "What age was he?" <laughs> right. Right. He said eighty-two. Right. Right. I was just picking a number, but yeah, that's. A <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're no longer in the game, huh? <laughs> 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 And for him to work in our lives to bring us about to the points where we recognize his faithfulness challenges us to be faithful back to him, doesn't it? It, it, it? Because he's been faithful to us, we owe it to him to be faithful to him. But boy, what a great thing that he does in showing us his faithfulness and, and call, letting us, you know, allowing us, even prompting us to call to mind the times that he has been perfectly faithful to us. That's a good one. Anybody else? We got four more, so we still got time. If you hadn't talked yet, you're going to have more opportunity. I'm going ahead and giving you a warning up front. All right. If you have talked, you can you can talk some more. It's okay. Don't drown out the ones that you know are, are sitting there going, "Oh, I hope this time runs out before he gets to me." All right? <laughs> we'll give you a chance. So, God is still working. The Lord is still working, and part of what He does as He works in our life. The second sermon we ended by saying that the Lord is listening. The Lord is listening. He's listening when we're praising Him for how wonderful He is. He's listening when we're thanking Him for how great things are going. And He's listening when we feel like our nation has been destroyed. Our world has fallen apart around us. Our city is under occupation and we are suffering in the ways we're suffering. 
the Lord is listening. So let me ask this question of you. Knowing that the Lord is listening, what are you saying to Him? What are you praying for you, for your family, for your church, for your community, for our world? What are you asking the listening Lord these days? Evan? He's going to start us off each time, man. He's, he's getting it in. I like it. Get it. Do it. I say I'm sorry a lot. Uh, yeah. As we should. I, like I was telling you a while ago, I was out in the backyard just ranting and raving. You know, saying, why is all this stuff happening to me? Why was it all piling in on top of me at one time? And I was just saying a lot of stupid things I should have. When I stopped, when I stopped, and I said, this is stupid. I got to change and I, you know, and then I said, God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean any of this stuff. I didn't mean it. Yeah. And I didn't have to wait for him to get there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he, was, he was right there while I was saying all this stuff. And I guess he was just waiting for me to have my little temper tantrum. <laughs> you know? Sure. And, 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 when I, and so I said, you know, I'm sorry I shouldn't have done all this. I'm sorry. Forgive me for, for acting this way, you know? And at that, at that moment, you know, I felt, I felt a lot better, you know. I got off my chest and God heard me and then he forgave me and then I went on. So. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is theologically accurate, but sometimes I feel like with me and God that, you know, kind of like a, an adult would do with a small child where this yeah. child's going to come and, man, that child's just going to get that adult. You know, that person's bigger than them and the adult just puts their hand on their forehead and they're swinging away and can't even get to them, you know. They're just kind of holding. And then, but then also immediately when that child tires of swinging, welcoming them into an embrace, right? You know, to, to hold them and say, look, now that you got that out, <laughs> come on, and let's, let's, let's do what's right, and let's do. Uh, well, that's right, that's right. Till you get that second wind and go again. That's right, that's right. God, this was fixed. <laughs> He's he's a he's a closet tantrum guy, <laughs> or 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 a lawnmower kind, you know tantrum guy. I walked out toward the, toward the shop out there, and uh, I'm I walking around, and I'm right, 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 right. And I'm walking around, and I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get in trouble for this. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Taking me to a position where I'll be able to handle the situations as they come up. Sure. He will. Yeah. And he probably is more than you already know, right? I mean, more than you already realize. Because, you know, we look back, and again, that perspective we talk about, the way we would have handled things maybe, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, probably a lot different than we handle them now, you know, and or hopefully anyway. Um, but he, uh, he's, he's definitely, you know, he's there to listen, even when we have complaints. Because what is Lamentations? <laughs> it, in the backyard, not out in public. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's doing it privately. He's not out there. He's not at the store talking about how bad God's treating him. <laughs> not in the house. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's good, too. That's good, too. Miss Jeannie appreciates that, I'm sure. Just get out of here. Go out there and you talk to God outside. You know, that's, you that's right. That's right. That's good. I, and I don't think our Heavenly Father ever tires of us realizing where we're sinful, realizing where we fall short, and, and repenting. And, and, and just, you know, confessing it. Not because he wants us to feel bad about ourselves, but because when we confess our unholiness, we're exposed more to his holiness. And, and that, that grows in our life. So. Steve, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you, you off. imagine somebody coming to see him looking out the window, who is he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd been caught in a spider web or something, you know. <laughs> All right, who, what else are we saying? What, what are we saying to the listening Lord? big blended family now you know and, and I'm always praying for his guidance for each and every one of them you know, mm -hmm. that that we all can be what he would have us be that's right that's right so, but then again I'm always you know I know he's listening and I'm thankful for, for whatever comes up and for you know he's watching over us sure. you know, now and just cool. I, I like to I think it was me and Ethel was talking one day I don't just have a prayer in the morning and have a prayer at night it's all day long 
it, it's you know it might be the instant something happened. Sure. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, that car didn't run over me. Or, right, or right. Whatever, you know. Right. So, so I, I know that he's listening all the time. Even More of that praying speaking, continually idea. Right, if I'm not even speaking verbally, yeah, he's that's still right. listening to my heart. And my that's right. Just, he's know. listening even when we're not talking to him. <laughs> Well, all right, what else are we saying? What else are we, what, what else are we praying for the Lord? I don't think he ever gets upset either when we pray for us to reach the potential that he's given us in him. Brother Rich, I try to be faithful and pray before Wednesday night service and also the Sunday mm -hmm. service because I know a lot of young people with children getting out the door on Sunday. Pray that's the last thing on the night. Sure. Those that are leading, I know whether they realize those prayers are going up or just feel the results of them. They're, they're, we're appreciative of them. Uh, oh, and, and and you've lived enough life to know how to do it better. <laughs> you know, to know how to pray, and and that's something that God continues to grow us in. Very good. Anybody else? What are you saying to the listening Lord? Help me, Lord, to ask the right question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To, uh, to get out of my own way and all the questions I might want to ask and get to what you're actually teaching me. That's good. And we were talking just the other day that we're taught biblically how and when and where to pray. But it doesn't say in the Bible how to listen. Mm. How to just, you say your prayer, you get it out of your system, asking and praying for everything else. Now give me time to talk to you. I still haven't got that across my <laughs> sure. school. Yet. That's right. I, I'm still working through my list of things I need to tell God, and I forget to listen to Him. I think one of the reasons He listens to us is so that we can learn to listen to Him, right? Uh, you know, he, he models again just what He expects from us and, and what He does for us. Anybody else? Well, I'm praying for my eyes problem to get solved. I know you are. We we praying with you that that'll that'll get fixed up. So. Well, we talked about that the Lord is listening, and that moved into, and some of you already touched on this part of it, um, but I think it, it definitely bears uh, repeating. In that, in that long chapter 3, the, the thing that we realize at the end there is, is that we must repent. And now that sounds like that's something that we do, but let's make sure we're clear about this, that there is no repentance on our part without the Lord working. Um, without, you know, this is uh, the, the opportunity and the any time we've ever taken him up on his call to repent is because he's allowed us to. And so when we actually go in and, and do repent, and as we repent, we need to remember that we should be thankful even for the opportunity to repent because God doesn't have to give it to us. We could turn around and face him and chase after him all day long, but if he doesn't allow us to see him and to follow him and to catch up with him as he does allow us, well, then our repentance means nothing. Uh, so when we say we must repent, now, uh, this one I'm going to let you think more internally. Okay, because I know in, in, a, in a room, even of people that you love and trust, um, and then also you know, knowing that we're broadcasting here. Um, but I want you to think internally and take just a moment to do so. Um, what, are the thing, what are the things in your life that you need to continually repent of? What are some things, uh, you know, some have been mentioned already in here today that, you know, uh, whether it be the, the conversations we have with God or the way we look at certain things or the way that we understand God and understand us or the way we think of ourselves or whatever. What are some of the things, the actions, the attitudes, the inactions? In other words, do we need to repent of not doing something that he's called us to do? What are some things that God has called you to repent of. So instead of sharing that vocally out loud, what I want you to do is just bow right now for a word of prayer. I'm not going to lead you in it, only just to say, you just take a moment and say, Lord God, if I don't know what I'm supposed to repent of, would you start to show me and open my eyes to it? If you know what it is that you need to repent of, well then let this next moment or two 
be a step in the right direction of repentance. Take just a moment, bow where you are, as long as you need to do it. We're going to give you about a minute or so to, uh, to just go to the Lord and ask about what you need to repent of. As you wrap up just that short time with God, just know that that doesn't have to be the sum total of the amount of time you spend today or tonight or this week in repentance. Uh, Maybe, if you're like me, sometimes we go a long time without practicing repentance in our lives. Um, we, we, We tend to a lot of other things. We ask God for a lot of other things. We deal with a lot of other stuff and not our own need to repent that God has given us the opportunity to do. Um, And so let that become part of your daily walk. Let repentance be something. Because I think sometimes, and and this is true, we have that first time that we ever repent when we come to Christ and we're saved by putting our faith in him. And that's a big repentance, right? That's, Lord, I'm repenting of everything out there. But then for as long as we have breath from that time until the time he either takes us home or the time he'll return... Um, we're going to deal with plenty of small things and sometimes things that we'll let build up to be big things again of repentance in our life. So let that be a part of your prayer. You know, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we confess our sins in our prayer, right? We're taught how to pray that way. Um, that's repentance or that's a part of repentance. Not just, hey, that I'm doing this, forgive me of it because I'm about to go do it again, but that I'm turning away from it. Help me to turn away from it, Lord, and to run towards you and not towards these things. Um, in that, when we repent, When we come to him in that struggle, sermon number four told us from chapter four of Lamentations that the Lord brings comfort. That's important for us to understand that the Lord doesn't just bring comfort so we'll be more comfortable. That's not it. That's one reason why people have said that, oh, well, I've tried Jesus, I've tried God, and it didn't work for me. Well, because most of the time they were looking for him to do something other than what he says he'll do. Um, A lot of times we'll say, well, I've been praying, but God hadn't done anything, right? Right? But then we realize, oh, we've been praying for God to take it away, but we haven't been praying anything about what he's teaching us in it. We haven't been praying anything that has anything to do with what he has for us to learn or to grow in our faith in through this struggle. We just want to feel better, right? Some people even uh, make a profession of faith, and what they they want to do is be assured of heaven. They don't want to commit their life to Jesus. And then years, maybe even decades later, they find out, oh, what I did was just to try to feel better about my sin, not to repent of my sin and give my life over to the Lord. But the Lord does bring comfort. Sometimes he brings comfort by taking away the suffering. That's a possibility, but that's not the only way he brings comfort. More times than that, I believe, in our life, especially when we recognize what he's doing, he brings us comfort not by taking away the suffering, but by changing us in the suffering. He brings comfort despite the circumstances, and we begin to feel his comfort. Um, We're going to give you a little bit of homework tonight, and and as you, not just the repentance part of it, but as you go out in just a few moments from our Bible study tonight, from our recap and discussion of Lamentations, I want you to think about how is God comforting you? Not just what are the things he's comforting you in, but how is he comforting you in those things? 
right? Sometimes it may be physical ailments. Well, he might not take that physical ailment away, but how is he changing you and bringing comfort to you even though that physical ailment, that, that you know, debilitation or that limitation that didn't used to be there, even though that may persist? Uh, in our relationships, he may not be fixing every relationship up to where everybody gets along and just we sing kumbaya all day, every day. Uh, but, but yet, how is he comforting us in, even in the midst of those sufferings still going on? If he doesn't take away the suffering, how is he comforting us in our suffering so that we can come to that, if it be repentance that we need to come to, if it be growth that we need to come to, if it be whatever we need to come to in him, how is he comforting us in, a, in that suffering to get there? We wrapped up this morning with the last sermon and we said that the Lord welcomes us. Any of these things that we've said about God, any of these things that we've responded uh, our music to God's ears. That does not because we just said them so great. I mean, thank you for those of you who spoke up. You, you did great. You did a wonderful job. Uh, but, but as great as your answers were, God's not saying, ooh, gold star, way to say that, right? But God is welcoming. It is music to God's ears in that he wants to hear his children struggle because he knows and he's, he's built us to where that's how we grow. Um, and so he welcomes us back to him. He welcomes us in the midst of our suffering. And that's how he deals with us. He welcomes you. He welcomes me. There's never anything we'll talk to the Lord about where he says, oh, I'm a little uncomfortable talking to, this, you, know, to you about this. There's, there's never going to be a time where you're going you know, to have that fit in the backyard. And God said, oh, that's one fit too many. You're done. I'm no longer listening to you. He can handle it. People say we should never question God. I can't find that anywhere in Scripture. I think God is big enough. I know God is big enough for all of my questions and more. So ask away. He's big enough, kind of like we were talking about, holding us at bay while we swing until we tire out. He can hold us as long as he needs to hold us until we finally get to the end of our energy and lean into him. God welcomes us. The Lord welcomes us. So take him up on his welcome. How do we find hope in hurting? How do we find that, 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 you know, that, that encouragement? It's only in the Lord. Let's look to what only he can do. Let's wrap up with a word of prayer tonight. Can I add someone to the prayer list real quick? Uh, if you'll do a prayer request, we're kind of running out of time. In our, but you can do it in just a second. So, let's, let's go to the Lord and pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to work in our heart. And, Lord God, that you, uh, that you would move in ways that, uh, that only you can do. So, Father God, help us to continue looking to you and to, and to move uh, as you call us to move, as you direct us to move. Lord God, we thank you that you are where we find our hope in hurting. So, Father God, even when we hurt, and especially when we hurt, help us to look to you and to you alone. Guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.